This week on the Jeep Talk Show, a Jeep buried for 40 years could finally be rescued, and Jeep kills their latest model. We remind you how you can win a Jamic in our giveaway, and Tony helps me fix the spare tire swing gate problem. Dan from the 4x4 Podcast stops by and shares some camera mount tips for Tammy. We play your voicemails, read your reviews, and Nikki G stops by as well. Oh, wait a minute. He's on vacation. Nate gives us some information about a unique axle, the Axle Rose. It's all happening on episode 269 of the Jeep Talk Show. You're listening to a 4x4, 4x4 Radio Network podcast. Podcasting since 2010. Are you ready? It's the Jeep Talk Show. With Tammy on Wrangler. Tony and Josh on Cherokee. So sit back. Strap in. And voice. Local Jeep News, National Jeep News, and news from around the world. It's This Week in Jeep. 40 years ago, a Jeep Wagoneer was parked in a small garage where it now lies entombed in sand near the ocean. Basil Musnuff, whose mother owns the property, says the garage is now collapsing around the Jeep. And it hasn't moved because the town of Turowo, Turo, Massachusetts, deemed the sand a critical part of the dune system. Yes, people, you can't move your Jeep because the dirt is special. <laughs> Basil says he's been visiting the place since the 70s and has never seen the Jeep driven. I don't know about you, but I'm wondering what kind of condition this rare Jeep is in and how good a picking a pickling agent this special sand dune is. Anyway, just think if they never removed the Jeep Wagoneer from the sand, it could be found sometime in the far distant future. Hmm. I don't know about you, but I think Charleston Heston finding a Jeep Wagoneer at the end of Planet of Apes would have been far more interesting. Now the town has decided to let the Jeep be removed because the ocean is eating away at the dunes and the Jeep could eventually end up in the ocean. The Jeep will be released from its sandy slumber this Friday, February 24th, if all goes as planned. Now the Wrangler Rubicon Hard Rock is dead. But don't worry, the 2017 Rubicon Recon is heading to showroom soon to take its place. And judging by what it's packing, you'll hardly miss the hard rock. Essentially, this is a Rubicon with some beefed up bits underneath and a few special cosmetic tweaks, a bit like the outgoing hard rock. Now, up front, there's a stronger Dana 44 with strengthened tubes and a heavy duty N forgings. Likewise, the front and rear differentials get stronger case cast covers than the hard rock stamped ones. The ratios are the same with 410 to 1 front and rear ratios, true lock, locking diffs, and a rock track transfer case. There's also a half inch lift. Woo! <laughs> Cosmetically, there are new 17 inch wheels exclusive to the Recon, equipped with 32 inch BF Goodrich cam tires. And the rock rails have been reshaped to allow owners to fit 35-inch tires without interference. That's something I would like. Mm -hmm. The Recon also adds red seat belts and stitching, something you haven't been able to get in a Wrangler before, a Jeep rep told us. Now, the red part, you can still get stitching in the Rubicon, but just not the red. And But who in their right mind would want red when you can have black? <laughs> I can never trick you. <laughs> never get one past you. So anyway, if that's what you were waiting for to get into a Wrangler Rubicon, there you go. There's also a special edition Farkles you'd expect, a dashboard plaque with a plaque, the fender badge, and a unique gauge cluster treatment. Hey, a big thanks to all of you who continue to help out by submitting stories to This Week in Jeep. If you have something you think we should report on or you have a response to any one of our Jeep stories, make sure you let us know by sending an email to info at jeeptalkshow.com. 
You got to be kidding me, Tammy. The, the whole thing that I, the only thing that I noticed in that story that when I looked at it, the show notes was the red part. <laughs> it's like, Ooh, you can get red now. I mean, they specifically go in there and say you can get red now. I mean, you know, that's a big deal. No, I know, but I was hoping you wouldn't see what I added to it. <laughs> uh, I knew where it was going. That's all right. So, uh, you know, it's pretty funny, this whole uh, red and uh, all the other color Jeeps thing's pretty funny because uh, uh, our listeners are starting to get in on it. So, uh, yes, you know, they I, are. I, I forgot to mention, uh, you know, we for not mentioning the team. Are you team red Jeep or team black Jeep? And you, you know, people are going to come in. No, I'm team green jeep and all the rest of the stuff but it's only two things folks this is black or red that's the only two colors that there really are for jeeps right well yeah (laughs) two cool color well one cool color one you know yeah you were on the right track there to start with before you caught yourself (laughs) yeah that is pretty funny about the sand can you imagine uh i mean being up there in the northeast where uh the sand dune is special I mean, I, I'm sure there's a, a, well, all up a bunch down. of scientific studies that indicate the real reason why that is, but just on the face of it, it just sounds ludicrous. Well, all up and down the East Coast. I've lived on the East Coast mm-hmm. for a long time, and when I was in South Carolina, you can even walk on certain parts of the sand dunes because <laughs> they were protected, <laughs> oh, and you could not pick the sand grass. They have grass, and it's to help prevent erosion but yeah yeah. i can see the erosion thing but i mean you know a a vehicle a multi-thousand dollar a couple of ton vehicle uh, that you can't move because you'll disturb the dune right well they what they should have done is just removed that whole garage it was falling down and just rebuilt up the sand dune yeah well it makes sense to me but uh yeah i think that's kind of the problem when the the government gets into uh personal property and personal rights Uh, right you know the funny thing would be is if uh, they go out there tomorrow because it was supposed to be friday yet tomorrow uh it'd be funny if they went out there tomorrow jumped in you know changed the uh the oil and some of the fluids cranked her up new battery cranked her up and drove her right out of the dune yeah (laughs) i think i read something about it it's like super rusty they think maybe i don't know It'll be interesting to see. I'm I'm hoping that they're going to have pictures of how it looks. It would be uh, really interesting. I guess it really just depends on how much, uh, well, it is salt water. So, yeah, I bet you it is going to be bad. Oh, that's too bad. Uh, I didn't even think about the salt water. Of course, that's where the dunes are on the beach, right? Yeah. Uh, Damn logic. You're listening to Jeep Talk Show, Show. the The number one Jeep podcast. At my mom's house. So you guys know we've been doing a uh, series on axles, Jeep axles to be specific. And I think some of these axles were on more than just Jeeps, but uh, how the how the axles relate to the Jeeps and, uh, and putting on there. Certainly, the I know there's one coming up about the, uh, the Ford uh, 8.8, which is not obviously not a Jeep uh, axle, but uh, you can certainly put it on one. Uh, so anyway, uh, we, uh, we're taking a bit of a turn tonight on the axles. You may remember recently that Nikki G uh, called in and uh, made a joke about uh, uh, an axle. And, uh, well, let me just play it for you, and uh, you'll, you'll hear uh, Nikki G's uh, voicemail and then uh, the uh, special uh, axle s- segment for, that uh, Nate over at uh, Wrangler Extreme has done for us. Hey, this is Nikki G, and uh, I'd like to thank Nate for his uh, installment of uh, axles. Uh, I've really learned a lot. There's, I really don't know too much about uh, axles. Well, that being said, I'd hate to correct anybody, but he left out the most popular and, I believe, the best axle there is. I'm talking about Axel Rose, the lead singer from Guns N' Roses. You know where you are? You're in the jungle, baby! Oh, jeez. <laughs> hey, Jeepers. This is Nate with another edition of Wrangler Extreme. Upon request, I'm adding one more axle to the list of axles during my axle series. So, tonight, I'm going to talk about the Axle Rose. <laughs> the Axle Rose is a popular model in certain crowds, and it had a pretty good run in the 90s. Some of its weaknesses were mm-hmm. it uh, makes this high-pitched sort of uh, wailing sound. Some people actually consider it musical. It uses an unusual gear oil additive, straight alcohol, or otherwise <laughs> known as hard liquor, uh, sometimes other substances that are a little less than legal. 
making it more expensive to run and sometimes a legal problem. And more often than not, when you're really counting on the axle rows, it just doesn't show up. <laughs> so how much did the axle rows weigh? Well, about 150 pounds in its prime. Uh, later models got a little bit heavier. <laughs> Support? Well, there was only one axle rose ever made. Some people consider that a good thing. Is it worth upgrading the axle rose? Well, like I said before, some love this axle, and they would just die to get their hands on it. But in my opinion, you'd be a lot better off if you were to upgrade to a Chris Cornell or a Scott Wayland. Mm -hmm. Max tire size for the axle rose? Well, unfortunately, this axle is suited more to chrome dubs and low pros. Well, that's it for the axle rose. Let me know what you think. If you don't like what I think, just blame Nikki G. <laughs> we always do. <laughs> that was really good. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, uh, that's uh, that's what we've come to expect from Nate and Wrangler Extreme. Some extreme views, extreme jeeping. Yeah, thanks a lot, Nate. Uh, and uh, as the, as Nate informed me uh, in uh, when he called in last week's uh, Jeep Talk call-in show, uh, apparently Nate doesn't have a multitude of names. I just keep name, naming him uh, YJ Nate, SpongeBob SquarePants Nate, right. uh, Extreme Nate. Um it's either that or, like I said on the show, he, he's not remembering all the different personalities. But I guess that's the, the thing about multiple personalities. You don't recall them. You don't know the other one exists. <laughs> that takes, out, takes away all the fun. You're listening to a 4x4, 4x4 Radio Network podcast. Hey, folks, the Jeep Talk Show is a proud member of the 4x4 Radio Network. Just visit 4x4radionetwork.com and learn more about the 4x4 podcast, the Center Steer podcast, and Trail Chasers podcast. You know, Tammy, I was just recently listening to a Trail Chasers episode, uh, 24, I think. Uh, but you can do, look for uh, Nicole Johnson's name uh, when you're searching it. Really good, uh, really good uh, uh, interview with Nicole Johnson. And uh, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Nicole or not, uh, Tammy. She used to be into uh, com competitive rock crawling, mm -hmm. and then she was into uh, monster trucks. She was actually performing on the monster truck, the Monster Jam series. Uh, she drove, uh, I think, Tasmanian Devil and then uh, Scooby Doo. Uh, she now is not doing that, but you can listen to more of this in the uh, the interview. And hear about where she's going with that. And uh, I did notice that she was talking about uh, having uh, a, a Jeep JKU uh, now and uh, hitting the trails. So uh, she is a uh, uh, back into Jeeps. Uh, so uh, gl glad to hear that. And actually, I can't remember if she ever, ever had a Jeep before. She had a competitive rock crawler that may have had some Jeep parts somewhere in there. Uh, but, uh, I think this is, uh, I think, uh, from what the interview, uh, what I heard in the interview that she's, uh, now in a, a JKU and I'm sure it's heavily modified. So if you guys, uh, would like to hear more about, uh, uh Nicole and uh, what's going on with her and, uh, uh, her interesting, uh, a life, which is more than just, uh, off-road and uh, monster truck driving and stuff. I wish, uh, uh, I wish that, uh, Cody had asked her, uh, how she fared, uh, physically, uh, from, right. from six years of driving a monster truck, you know, as a, as a, uh, a job. So she would, I guess every weekend, every other weekend, or I, I don't know what the schedule was like, but I know there was a lot of dates. Uh, I think it, it came here, uh, in January, uh, when they, uh, they had the monster jam here. You'd always see it in the news. Well, now there's even more Jeep Talk Show to love. It's called the Jeep Talk uh, Call-In Show. Tammy and Tony, that's me, <laughs> takes your calls live every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Central Time. Yep, you call in while listening live to the show. Join us every Tuesday, 8 p.m. Central Time at jeeptalkshow.com. Don't forget to download this extra content each week or subscribe and never miss an episode. Yeah, we have a really good time with this show. Yeah, we do. Shut up and listen. Shut up. So shut up. You don't shut Man, up. Shut up, Shane. Hey. <laughs> shut up and listen. It's time for Wrangler Talk. It's time for G Mama. Hey, folks. On last week's episode, we talked about some of the different cameras and camera mounts. We also discussed battery time and what is a good option. And when we go off roading, we always want to get video of our adventures and we always are looking for the 
the best and the easiest and the long lasting type of cameras. Well, Josh shared his GoPro and their mounts and he loves all those mounts in his GoPro. GoPro. Um, I shared what I use for my camera. Um, I use my retro camera, I call it. Tony calls it my big fat camera. <laughs> no, he didn't call me fat. He called my big camera fat. It is fat. Yes. Anyway, I use that for my off-roading videos. And I mentioned the mounting system I use or lack thereof. So because of my mounting system is not very good, um, somebody responded and replied to that on Twitter. And that would be Dan from the 4x4 podcast. And he um, gave me some tips on how I can keep using my antique camera, <laughs> but just a little safer. Hey guys, this is Dan from the 4x4 podcast. I uh, had to pull over. I was on my way home and I was listening to the show and Tammy was asking about a way to mount her, uh, her old handy cam uh, to record the action. My recommendation would be if you like that camera, just keep it. If it's working, still use it. Um, but pick up the RAM mount. Those suction cups are awesome. It's got a ball and socket type joint and you can get a a base that will actually screw into the bottom of that camera um, just like a normal tripod and it'll hold it nice and it'll be nice and firm but it'll be stuck to the windshield so you may get some of the vibration that would transfer through the windshield um, but those suction cups are awesome that would be my recommendation uh, if you give it a try let me know I'm a huge fan of RAM mount I've got it on I've got the uh, cup holder, I've got uh, all kinds of tablet mounts and phone mounts, and it is the choice of the military. So, I highly recommend you check it out. Ram mounts. Well, Dan and everyone out there, I decided to check them out. I went to rammounts.com, and I really like the fact that I can use the suction cup mount with my old-fashioned video camera. So, guess what I did? I actually bought them tonight. And I happened to find a 15% off code on Facebook, which um, goes through tomorrow, um, the 24th, if you just put in FB15, um, I believe it is. Another reason to su subscribe to the show so you're not listening to this after the, uh, the, right. the, the thing is over. Right, it's too late on Monday. <laughs> Um, anyway, so I got 15% off and, um, I just want to thank Dan so much for sharing that. I can't wait to get them. Hopefully I got the right, the right one. Um, and if you have a favorite camera or a mount you use on the trail, we want to hear from you and there's tons of way you can do that. And you can email me at info at jeeptalkshow.com and you can leave a voicemail on our Jeep Talk Show website. Or you can go over to our mobile-friendly jeeptalkform.com. It's our new mobile-friendly form that we created just for you. It isn't a typical form. There's no flaming or telling you to go to Google to do your search, and there's no dumb questions. And you can find out more about all the stories we share, all the links we share here on the Jeep Talk Show at jeeptalkform.com. Hope to see you there. Yeah, we love seeing your post and uh, especially your pictures. Everybody loves pictures, Tammy. Yes. It's uh I think I guess forums is one of the places you can say I go there for the pictures, not the articles. So it's it's right. different yeah. than, you know, the Playboy magazine. Hey, did you hear they're going to be doing nudes in Playboy again? No, I You know, they got rid of that. They were going to go with no with uh, no I guess more articles and just pretty girls and right. appa apparently they're switching back to the nudes again. <laughs> when I was little, I remember in the bathroom cupboard. Oh, no. There's a whole stack of them. Was there? I wonder why they were in the bathroom. That seems strange. Uh, uh, yeah, gross. <laughs> Where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show? What are you talking about, man? Where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show? I got no idea what the heck. Where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? Get out of my face, yo. Hey, where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? Underwater. Hey, where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? In the bubble bath. Where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? No clue. And where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? While flexing on stumps. Where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? Hey, where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? Hey, where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? I would assume on the radio. The Jeep Talk Show, available on iTunes and at jeeptalkshow.com.
Hey, where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? We would really like to know. Just give us a call at 530-675-4102 and let us know where you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at. And really any place, even if you're in the bathroom looking at Playboys, we'd like to know that too. Mm -hmm. So uh, anyway, uh, here's the reviews. And uh, I always say this because it's true. I love reviews. I love hearing from you folks. Of course, it's great to hear how great we're doing and stuff. But mainly, I just like knowing that you guys are out there and you're interested enough to, uh, to let us know what's going on with you and uh, uh, how you're listening to the show. Now, uh, I recently uh, uh, requested and probably bitched a little bit about us not having any iTunes reviews. And boy, you people stepped up. We got three of them tonight, Tammy. Yep, yep, we sure did. Um, we have a five-star review from Aiden Vargas. I finally have a Jeep, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. Anyway, There's great seven of show. them, right? It's a grill. It's a Jeep grill, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, there's, <laughs> I think there's six. Maybe seven. It's too far away. Um, great show. Listen all the time. I enjoy listening to you guys. are very informative, funny, and awesome. Now, the big question, what color my Jeep is? First off, it's an 07 Sahara. My favorite color is red. But, <laughs> but, I'm with Tammy on this one. I got a black Jeep. Sorry, guys. <laughs> you all have a good one till next time. Yay, Aiden. But I see, love Aiden. If a Go red Aiden. Jeep if a red Jeep had been available, that's what he would have gotten because that's the favorite color. You ask most children they're gonna tell you red is their favorite color because it's it's gorgeous. This most it's fabulous. Girls would say their favorite color is pink, but Well it's a it's kind of a version of red, isn't it? Red, yeah, I guess. So <laughs> <laughs> so I, I want to twist it. It doesn't matter, Tammy. It can be green. I want to say it's a, it's a version of red. So just, just you know, go with it. So our, our next review here is uh, from uh, C. Cowan 14. He says, great podcast. I finally got a black 2008 JK last <laughs> April. Now, it's April, so this may be an April f Fool's. He may be really having a red one. I wanted a, a Jeep my whole life, and I'm not sure why I waited so long uh, now that I am 48, I listen to your podcast all the time, trying to learn everything I can about Jeeps and Jeeping. Good stuff, guys and gal. Thank you, Chris C. Well, thank, thank you, you, Chris. That's great. I don't, you know, I understand. I've, I've, I've told this story before, but uh, I'll mention it again. I guess I was like um, 20, maybe 19, and I wanted a Jeep. I wanted to get a Jeep. I, I checked into it. And do you know it was going to cost me $75 a month for insurance? Liability only. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty old. So $75 a month doesn't sound bad. No, that's a pretty good deal. But back then, because yeah. uh, that, that would have been around 1978 or something, 79, 75 bucks a month was, uh, was a bunch of money, especially for uh, uh, a kid that wasn't even 20 yet. Right, So sure. So my, uh, my Jeep buying days did not occur until, uh, well, 1998, when we got the, uh, the, the 1998 Jeep that I have. And, uh, of course, I love it so much. I've had it ever since then. Yeah, I was 47 when I got, well, I got a 13 Sahara. Well, you're right there with Chris then. Yeah. Yep. Um, another review, uh, a five-star review, Black J.K. Mike. Hmm. <laughs> I wonder what color Jeep he has. Anyway, great podcast. I enjoy the tech as well as the great off-road information. Yep, we appreciate that, and we appreciate, appreciate all the reviews. We didn't get any reviews on uh, Facebook or Twitter. Uh, we love getting them there, too. So if you'd like to uh, give them, I mean, you may not, may not be using iTunes. You may not know how to do reviews on iTunes. Uh, we can uh, certainly get reviews uh, on the Twitter and uh, directly on Facebook. If you go to facebook.com slash Show. Uh, poke around there a little bit. You'll probably see the word reviews. You can uh, read the reviews that we have there. And, you know, Tammy, we've got quite a few reviews on Facebook. Oh, yeah. I think it's, yeah, quite a bit. Yeah, I was really surprised about that. I think I turned that on just kind of as a, as a lark and then uh, saw, started seeing them come in over there because, uh, you know, everybody and their mama is on Facebook. So I, I guess right. convenience is a is a big deal. Hey, I just had an idea. We should start keeping a little tally, red versus black. Did you want me to keep up with that? I can do a spreadsheet. So now on it's that. it's three to zero <laughs> right now. If we start right now, yeah. I'm winning. Well, that but I'll be maintaining the spreadsheet, Tammy. Oh yeah, you didn't get my I joke. Don't, I don't trust you. <laughs> maybe we 
Maybe we should have Steve, 4.3, or, yeah, 4.3. 4.3 LXJ. You know, uh, yeah. uh, then we would get no, it would be black zero, red zero, blue a billion. Because yeah. it is a blue one. <laughs> right. <laughs> Are you tired of all that noise from those other shows? Now, Darryl, I think you ought to keep that rig at the mall. Now you can relax to the pleasing tones of the Jeep Talk Show every week. Unless you got Dana 60s and 40s. Get the highest audio quality possible with each download. Now, you know, you can use them in with them, with them super swampers. And if you're tired of all that other stuff. Uh, and a thing with the tank, big old tires and a lot of Then subscribe to the highest quality podcast on the web. The Jeep Talk Show. Available on iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher Radio, and more. You guys are getting to give me a beer. I like how Josh just does the highest quality podcast on 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 the air. It's not on right. the air, and I I don't think we're the highest quality, but we try really hard. I think we 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 are pretty good quality. I hope so. I I hate overselling things, and I I guess that's I need to get over that. But uh, anyway, so let's get over to our voicemails, Tammy. Yeah, not only do we love getting reviews from you guys, we love hearing from you and we love your voicemail. So be sure and call our voicemail line at 530-675-4120 or you can jump over to our website at jeeptalkshow.com and leave us a message. Just click on that little leave voicemail button on the right hand side of the screen. So don't piss the people off at 4120. Call 530-675-4102. Oh. <laughs> we, we did that I'm accidentally. Dyslexic. Yeah, we did that accidentally one time, and then we got a voicemail about somebody calling in and, and talking oh. to the people at the wrong number. <laughs> so, so 530-675-4102. Not- yep, so nothing against you, Tammy. I just know that people, they'll call that the wrong number, and then the, the people on the line is like, what? What a Jeep talk show. What the hell are you talking about? (laughs) Oops. Hey, this is Tony. And I'm Tammy. And this is Josh. And you've reached our 24-7 voicemail line. You guys know what to do. So at the beep, leave your message. Hey, guys. Just wanted to call and uh, let you know I'm listening to your podcast. I'm a couple weeks behind. Uh, My name is Jason. Uh, Formerly Kentucky, soon to be relocating to Virginia. I'm actually driving through the mountains uh, in Virginia about three hours away from where I'm going to be. And by that time, I'll be all caught up on your podcast, but just wanted to let you know that I enjoy everything you guys put out. And uh, I don't know, because I'm a little behind, but I think an Oberlin uh, Jeep packing list and things to buy would probably be a a good thing to start on the show, Uh, maybe get people a little more interested in going out there and actually camping and things like that. But uh, keep up the good work, guys, Uh, and thanks for making this drive a little bit better. Mm-hmm. A little. <laughs> I know. I picked up on that too. <laughs> hey, you know, we could have Dan as our guest. Yeah, uh, I've asked Dan to, to be a guest. I think he's been on here before, but uh, it's. Uh, I, I know. I know Dan is um, is stretched pretty thin uh, mm-hmm. with all the stuff that he does. He even has trouble putting out the uh, uh, the podcast. His very popular. Uh, uh, the four by four uh podcast uh and uh so uh but yeah we certainly can reach out to him uh there have been some other suggestions about uh uh some uh facebook uh pages uh that uh, are available for overlanding mm-hmm. and uh i guess i always get stuck on what's overlanding because the the uh the definition of uh, going overland is is very wide it can be right. uh, a weekend camping trip or it can be uh, like uh, the um, brain farming. Like what the Oregon Trail dudes yeah, did. Yeah, certainly they, they did a month. And there's a, a gentleman, uh, Dan Greck, that is uh, currently transversing uh, Africa. And he's going to yep. be going 40,000 miles in his uh, Jeep JKU. So uh, that certainly, to me, qualifies as overlanding. Mm-hmm. So um, I guess, uh, I mean, I've been camping before. I guess we could always start with uh, what do you do when you go camping? Uh, right. and, and not not pack everything under the roof that you have in your house in your Jeep because that's mm-hmm. what I did when we went uh, when we went camping a, a while back. So I think uh, people overpack sometimes. Yeah, you never know what you're going to need. Um, right. You know, and uh, if uh, if you run across some aliens, you want to have some stuff to barter with too. You know, like well, let's not true. do the anal probe here. Take this peace pipe. Yeah. So, uh, hey, this, uh, speaking of anal probing, uh, this isn't anything like that. We'd like for you to take a few moments and go over and, and uh, take our survey. So just go over to uh, 
jeeptalkshow.com slash survey. Answer a few questions. Don't forget, don't worry about putting your PIN number in and your mom's maiden name. It's all part of the process. He's kidding, folks. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> it's all, really super easy. I'm always kidding, Tammy. So, yeah. so Tammy, here's something. Well, we might have some new people listening and they might be going, oh my gosh. Well, they'll have to learn the hard way, just like everybody else. So uh, this is something we haven't done for quite a while because we, we've run out of time in the show. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I just want to point out, I don't want to make, uh, I don't want to pick on Josh too much because he, he's not here. Oh, who, am, who am I kidding? We always, uh, always pick on God, We didn't even let people know he wasn't here. Well, that's, uh, that's why I'm doing this now. Do you mm-hmm. realize that we're just now at the 30 minute mark? And I know we're at Amazon. You bought what? And this is some of the, some, the reason why we haven't been doing this one is because we've had, not had the time in the show to do it. So, uh, uh, well, let me not let me not drag this out any longer, and then uh, have Josh show me like, look, your show ran long, and I wasn't right. there. So let's get into some Amazon. You bought what? Amazon.com and the Jeep Talk Show present. You bought what? what? So if you're not familiar with Amazon, you bought what? And, and you may not because we haven't done it in a while and we have get, getting lots of new listeners every day. Basically, what we have is a little deal, a little dang deal with uh, Amazon where you can go over to jeeptalkshow.com slash Amazon on your little browser and your phone, your uh, PC, your tablet, and it will take you directly over to Amazon where any time after that, go into that, that uh, URL I just gave you, jeeptalkshow.com slash Amazon, any purchase you make at Amazon, the show will get a few pennies, a few percent percentage points of the sale. It doesn't cost you anything more, anything less. It's exactly the same price whether you go to this link or not. So the, basically, they're paying us for the advertising, and uh, it's great. It's amazing. It's it's you know it can be you know fifty hundred bucks a month, and it really helps out uh, paying for the various things that we do here on the show. So if you, uh, if you shop at Amazon or if you've been thinking about doing it, just go to jeeptalkshow.com slash Amazon first and any purchase you make, we'll get a little bit of it. Now, we get a list of people that make purchases. We don't get your name. We don't get uh, anything about you other than what you purchased. And that's why we do this segment. We see these things that people are buying and we just uh, take a few moments here to recognize the folks that are going to the uh, the site, the Amazon, and remembering us first. So, uh, Tammy, what do we have uh, first? Well, first I want to preface that Josh is usually our producer of the show, and he usually types all these things up. So just keep that in the back of your mind. <laughs> um, anyway, the first item is an extra large hammock tree straps. Easy hang suspension kit, and it's twenty one ninety nine. Super easy and fast setup for your hammock. Easily, easily adjustable and won't stretch. Free wire gate carabiners cannot be used to tie up your significant other, but Who can says? be used for spanking. <laughs> Remember what I said right before I read? Now, see, be brave, Tammy. <laughs> you have a Jeep, you know, own it. <laughs> and don't forget, go over to jeeptalkshow.com slash Amazon before you make any purchases like these folks. <laughs> I guess this it's more than one uh, <laughs> before they bought this easy hang suspension kit. Maybe Josh bought it and mm-hmm. he was speaking from experience. Um, experience. Oh, Come think of the word. <laughs> All right. So this one is a team Losi Baja Ray one tenth scale four wheel drive RC trophy truck. Somebody, Holy cats. Yeah. Somebody went and spent $449.99. And, and but they got free shipping on this RC truck, and they remembered us, Tammy. They remembered the show before mm-hmm. they went and spent awesome. all this money. Thank you very much because you know, two uh, percent, five percent, whatever it is, uh, four hundred and forty-nine dollars is uh, a lot more than if it was four dollars. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, we need Josh here to say I, I was told <laughs> told there was I was told there'd be no math, no math. So this is a realistic Baja-inspired chassis design, three millimeter hard anodized aluminum chassis plate. Integrated chassis roll cage, long travel suspension, four link live rear axle, waterproof electronics, very important, uh, sealed metal gear transmission and diffs. Coil over oil filled shocks includes, uh, looks like Spectrum DX2E transmitter with AVC adjustment, which I have no idea what that means, but you folks that are into RC stuff, I'm sure you do. 
Uh, big thanks and shout out to whoever purchased this, uh, this uh, RC car. And of course they went over to jeeptalkshow.com slash Amazon first. And one more great stuff. Big gap filler, 12 ounce insulating foam sealant for eight ninety nine. Oh, this is great stuff. Elegant design and smooth finish. This product is manufactured in the U.S. Great for creating weather tight seals in larger gaps and cracks in your home. Airtight, water resistant, paintable, sandable, stainable, perfect for use with wood, drywall, metal, masonry, glass, and most plastics for interior and exterior use. Fill seals and insulate gaps greater than one inch. Even those stubborn, hard to reach plum- plumber cracks. Now, be careful because if your plumber comes over and his pants are riding a little low and you foam him, he's not going to be a happy camper. No, he it, won't. It will fill that crack very easily, though. Uh, are you familiar with this stuff, Tammy? It's like a brown foam that expands. It mixes and expands and gets hard. It's a great insulator. We um, Actually, we have some here in the laundry room that so, we use to yeah. fill in some gaps and cracks. I would love to be able to find a, a place, assuming it would be inexpensive, where you could get a bunch of that stuff and a hose and just spray it in the attic, you know, between the rafters and just oh, yeah. insulate the hell out of your roof because uh, they will come and do that, but it, it you know, costs quite a bit of money. So, well, my uh, husband found another use for it. We um, have these pesky chipmunks that like to dig holes in our yard. Uh-huh. And he he's like Caddyshack trying to get rid of them. <laughs> um, so he took this stuff and sprayed it in their hole. I'm like, what are you doing? How do you get the uh, chipmunk to stand still? <laughs> oh, come on, you saw it coming. <laughs> we just found out what you bought. Oh my God, I just can't believe that made it on the list. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Hey folks, don't forget we're giving away a brand new jammock. What's a jammock, you ask? Well, it's a hammock for your Jeep Wrangler. You put it on top of your Jeep once your top is down. And you can check out last week's episode 269 for my product review. Or you can go over to my blog and I did a review there and there's pictures. It's a great way to sit back and relax on top of your JK or JKU, or while you're camping, or you're taking a break from wheeling. Hey, Tony, why don't you let folks know how they can go ahead and enter to win um, the Jamic? You know, I need to write that down because I'm winging it every week. Every I know. <laughs> I have to remember <laughs> what, what it is that you got to do. First off, I want to say that uh, the Jamic uh, uh, company there is veteran-owned, which I don't know if it's, it's important to you, but it's important to me. I always like mentioning that because we need to support our veterans, especially when they're out there coming up with products that we can have fun with and uh, really make our Jeeps more unique, which is, of, of course, what we all, I think, like doing is having something a little special, a little different about our Jeep that we can show off to uh, all of our Jeeping friends or better yet, our Toyota friends and uh, those uh, those other vehicles that have a Jeep name that uh, aren't really Jeeps. But I digress. Uh, so here's how you can enter to win. We want you to go over to Facebook. Now, of course, you're already on Facebook. You, you have to be. It's, you know, the 21st century. So you go over there with your smartphone, or you can do it however you want to, frankly, but it's really easy on your smartphone to do a live Facebook video. We want to know why you cannot absolutely live without a Jeep hammock, uh, a jammock. So uh, go over there. Let us know why you can't live with it. I don't care if you lie. Lie all you like, just as long Mm -hmm. as it's entertaining. And Tammy, Josh, and I are going to look at these videos and decide who is the best one, who has the best one. So make sure that we know about it. And to do that, once you've done the video, uh, go in there and uh, put our, you know, at Jeep Talk Show name in the comments. That way we'll be aware of it. And then, of course, if you're not, if you haven't already, go over there and uh, to the, the uh, Facebook.com slash Jeep Talk Show page and like our page. So that's really all you got to do. You got to do a, a Facebook Live video telling us uh, why you need a jammock. And then, uh, of course, like our page. Simple enough, isn't it, Tammy? Very easy. Very, And Facebook Live is so easy to do. Yeah. You just click the little live button like on your phone and you do it will give you a count on three, two, beep. And then you go live, you say your thing and click done. And we've easy learned, peasy. and we, we've learned uh, tonight, actually before the show that you should call, hold your, your phone straight up and down and not turn yeah. it sideways, you know, or you'll be 
kind of look like this. But we don't care. You can do it either way you like. Upside down is uh, is fine with us as well. Hey, folks, and while you're thinking about it right now, go take our survey at jeeptalkshow.com slash survey. It just takes a couple seconds, fill out the little survey, and you give us a lot of great information. Yeah, we love great information. We love hearing from you guys. Uh, and uh, the survey is one way we can uh, know a lot more about you. And, of course, we don't know anything specifically about you because it, it doesn't. Uh, we don't see your names or emails or anything like that. Just we get the stats, age, uh, sex, uh, position. Uh, no, I'm sorry, that's male, female that I'm thinking of. Um, so uh, anyway, that's uh, we'd like for like for you to fill out that survey and uh, give us a little information. It's it's great to know what our audience is. Frankly, I want to see the the female numbers go up. I want more females involved, not necessarily just in the show, but I want more females involved in jeeping out there on the trail and i think we can reach out and that's one of the reasons why i liked uh that's uh that interview uh trail chasers podcast so much with uh, nicole johnson is because here's a woman that uh is very active in many aspects of off-road and uh uh it's it's just great to see it, you know it's like you tammy getting out there on the trail it's it's so much fun i think you've been off-road more than i have probably and you drive a long a long way i don't even like driving an hour get into the yeah, off-road it, park. it's a it's a long drive that would be a fun uh, a fun park to go to though i've i've seen that one on tv a number of times mm-hmm. i love it there <sighs> so what did you do with josh's body tammy oh sh- <laughs> <laughs> remember i told you the lime does not disintegrate the body it yeah. actually preserves it never use lime um i don't hear the fire I guess it's just too hot. It's going. Oh, I hear it now. Okay. Yep. It's like 70 degrees here. I think it was probably 80, 80 here today. It's ridiculous. That is like 20 to 30 degrees warmer than normal. Al Gore is uh, sitting in his uh, uh, $5 million dollar mansion <laughs> going, <laughs> I told you. Yep, yep. So I made it out to the garage this weekend because it was so warm. I finally got to get out and do some little things that I need to get done. Um, The first thing was wash all that icky, yucky salt off my Jeep. Oh, I would hate having salt on my Jeep. Um, And I could like wipe my my hand on the, um, the hood and it just felt like there was this crusted yuck on there. So... I clay barred that off and waxed just the hood. You're going to rub a hole in that Jeep. I know. <laughs> um, <laughs> but while I was at it, I, um, I had to take my swing gate so I could wash the tailgate. And I could not move it. My husband had to come out and he literally had to push it with all his might. Really? So where... The tailgate is um, mounted to the bumper. There's that that little mount that's supposed to swing it. Oh, I think I'm misunderstanding. I thought you were talking about the door. You're talking about the the, the, the tire gate that the tire that the, the tire on. is on. Gotcha. Yes. So that little I don't even know what you call it. Pivot call point. It. It's a it's like yes. a hinge. Yeah. The hinge. I think I need to take it off and put something on it, but I don't know what i can use to keep it axle grease just uh axle well, actually uh i think lithium uh the lithium grease is better because it's it's uh, uh it lasts longer and uh it's uh, more waterproof than the, the right. axle grease but um it's been a while since you installed that bumper do you recall reading anything in the instructions about how tight you should be making the i think there's on mine it's just a, a single uh bolt that holds that on and i was told yeah. verbally uh, not to tighten that thing down all the way because Maybe. this was this is what would happen so it's not meant to be uh, on mine anyway it's, it's and i right. suspect yours it's not supposed to be po- torqued down it's right. supposed to be t- on there tight enough to to keep it on there huh okay i'll but, have to check that out and i don't recall if i uh, if i greased mine or not but i mean greasing it should be uh, if it's like mine uh, it should be very easy you just take out that one uh, that one bolt on mine and right. then uh, lift the whole tire carrier off, which you yeah, probably want to. I w- I'm too lazy. I would just lift it off with the tire on it. Uh, yeah, see, 
<laughs> I I can barely lift my tire. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it, it would be tough for me too. But like I said, I would rather work twice as hard so I can do uh, you know save uh, five minutes of work. Uh, but that's my own uh, personal problem. Uh, but anyway, and then, uh, you know, squirt some lithium grease. I, I get my uh, lithium grease in a, a spray can. It's white, usually. So can you just buy that at any auto parts store or Home Depot or something? Uh, I got it at the auto parts place. Uh, okay. it, it may be available other places. I'm, I'm sure it's available on Amazon if you don't feel like going to the store. Right. And That's you want to buy a case of it. Place. <laughs> and what? And you want to buy a case of it. <laughs> yeah. Like going to have it at a party or something, you know. <laughs> kind of like my purple spray paint. Yeah, it'd be funny. You could get uh, a lot of plastic bags and then lithium grease it up, and that way you wouldn't have to have water for the, the slip and slide. It'd just be a lithium grease there slide. There you go. <laughs> yeah, all the moms would love that. <laughs> yeah, they would. Um, so my blog post today was about all the stuff that I did in the uh, working in the garage, and it was a Jeep. Jeep. I put that Jeep moms take a little longer to get stuff done. Mm-hmm. And it's not because we don't know what we're doing or we don't know how to use things. It's because I'm going in and out and in and out of the house. The dog's barking, wants to come in. The kids need to eat. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, those kids are old enough to feed themselves, Tammy. Yeah, they are, but I spoil them, I guess. Uh-huh. Um, but I did, was able to get my purple um, door inserts the handle inserts i saw that the outside looked, of the door and i you know I, I think i mentioned to you in the post that i thought you were talking about putting them on the inside inside yeah these are on the outside the handles yep. on the outside and you know i'm really surprised jeep didn't come out with something like that from the factory you know where you get that whenever you buy the jeep because right to me it just makes sense that you should have something in that little uh, recessed right. area of the handle exactly I just need to um, paint the screws. They're still silver. Now, did you have a problem with that before I mentioned that? Or was it after I mentioned that they, were, they weren't purple? No, I was thinking about <laughs> doing that. Um, I have a tendency I, to do I, that to people. <laughs> no, I knew I had to wait till they get on because I didn't want to paint the threads. Right. Um, so, anyway, that's done. And I was able to... Um, Put my anti-flicker decoder, I installed those um, for my headlights. Because remember how that one was um, flickering and then it would just like turn off? Yeah, uh, I, I wonder, I'm wondering if that's still going to happen. It's not the flickering, but it's having it turn off. Yeah, it hasn't. Good. And it, and it hasn't actually turned off since I hit it that time. But when I took the headlights out, and the connections that I made, it wasn't actually all the way connected. Ah, there you go. Oh, so you found I'm it. thinking that was that issue. Um, the other thing that um, a listener, or I mean, uh, one of my um, followers suggested, he put these um, decoders in his Jeep, and he never, he just like shoved them in there, which mm-hmm. is what I did. And after a while, I guess all the banging and bouncing around somehow did something to him where it sh- no- nothing works. His headlights don't work. So he suggested, which was suggested to him, that I somehow, because he got new ones, that I somehow um, secure them to something. And he was going to send me a picture of what he's done. You know, electronics is uh, pretty insensitive to shock. So I'm wondering if it had something to do with uh, the heat because electronics generally, I mean, it can be designed to handle the heat, but electronics is generally susceptible to heat. And I wonder if there's any correlation between the time of year that it went out. Like maybe it was during summertime, maybe it was very hot uh, for, you know, a month or so prior to it going out. It certainly is, hell, he could have even gotten water in there. Uh, There certainly isn't anything wrong with uh, fixing that to a a firewall or, or something in there to, you know, just keep it from flopping around. Um, you know, what you could do maybe is get you some uh, wipes, some alcohol wipes, mm-hmm. clean off a, a good spot on the uh, somewhere on the inside there, you know, close to where it, uh, the, the little box is, and put some uh, of that uh, uber sticky double-sided tape. Okay. And, uh, and stick it that way. It probably wouldn't have a problem sticking to the, the little box, 
it probably would be more more likely to come off of the uh, the metal part inside. That's why I recommend using that alcohol to right. clean any oil and dirt and grit that's on there first. And uh, then you could just check it every so often. Now, if you can find a couple of holes, you know, because there's usually little holes in the, like, I, I don't know exactly in where it housing. is. I would assume it's kind of up close to the front. Yeah. Uh, but they put little holes in things. And if you find a place, you could actually run a tie wrap through there. Right. So, so you could put the double-sided sticky and then run a tie wrap through the two holes around the box itself as kind of a, a, a way to keep it there. So I'm, I'm hoping to get to it this weekend because it's supposed to be like 75. Oh, my goodness. Weekend. You're going to be sweating out there. I know. I was sweating today at work. It was so hot. Oh, that's right. I forgot. They don't have AC in there, do they? No. and Well, not, not. We did last summer where I was, and then they moved me, and now ah, have they, AC again. They want to see you sweat over there, Tammy. She's working yep. hard. Yep. Um, and I know I'm hogging all the time. Oh, that's all right. I, for, um, so I have, I think I mentioned this before, I have my last free oil change. And I know people are like, oh, you need to change your own oil. Um, oh, milk it for as long as you can, I say. Yeah. So I'm going to head up to um, Adam's Jeep where I bought my Jeep. They have an extreme motorsport shop. And that's what they specialize in is lifting Jeeps and outfitting Jeeps. And they sell they're lifted Jeeps, so and they're very. They have a very good reputation here. So anyway, I'm gonna head up there and get my oil change, but I'm gonna also have them look at my um, steering stabilizer because um, I'm not being able to turn my full turn. Lock radius. the lock, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I also have been told. I know I've been talking about getting a relocation bracket. Um, to move it so it's up higher so I'm not hitting it, mm -hmm. which is how I um, damaged it before. I came down hard on a rock and twisted it. We had to take it off. And then we got myself off the, the trail we were on and we put it back on. And I don't think we adjusted it properly enough. So um, somebody said that by putting on one that goes to the top, because my Jeep is lifted... I have to be careful because I could bind up my steering. So I'm just, but my thinking is people do it all the time. Mm -hmm. So, and I've never heard that before. So hopefully they'll um, guide me in the right direction on which one I should buy so I can do right. that. Right, right. Um, I don't know. I, I've not seen the specific installation, but I'm wondering if uh, perhaps if you uh, uh, if you have them adjust that the the steering stabilizer back to its right spot, that you couldn't take some uh, purple fingernail polish and draw a line as to where that position is, where the bracket is supposed to be, so that if it does come loose again and you have oh. to and you have to put it back on there. You can just go straight to that line. I usually That's just, a good idea. I usually just use the, uh, you know, you can see where things uh, are dirty and clean. And you can tell where it goes. But, uh, right. uh, you know, after it's already been on there and, uh, and adjusted and somebody's had their hands on it. And that's another good thing about doing stuff yourself because nobody's going to take care of your stuff like you will. So, uh, but anyway, uh, to, to, to have that le be less of an issue, you could put some paint on there. And, you know, have a little a style at the same time by using the purple. Right, um, of course. Or you can just I use do a, have purple fingernail polish. Or you could just use a, a screwdriver and scratch into the metal. <laughs> and uh, yeah. that would work just as well, but it be, would be less fancy. But I really do want to um, lift, you know, relocate that to move it up. Oh, I don't blame you. Yeah. It's already been a problem uh, once. It's going to be a problem again. Right. And I'm surprised I never did that when I was stock. But. Well, I'm sure it's like most things. I mean, uh, I remember Josh uh, went out uh, uh, rock crawling without a uh, uh, a transfer case skid, and uh, he came to, right down on top of a rock and uh, cracked that uh, that transfer oh. case in half. Uh, right. And and but he's been out rock crawling many times before and never had an issue. It's it's just you know that, that's kind of I guess the adventure. In going off roading, you don't know what's there. You don't know how it's going to hit your, uh, how it's going to hit or affect your Jeep, and and it's just like being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Uh, uh, this is just those those things that happen. You may never have another issue 
with uh, your uh, uh, the, uh, right. the, the steering steer. stabilizer again. Uh, it's right. just, just, just that time. But that's that's the way we do things with Jeeps. We try to fix those problems that come up so we don't have them again. So how about you? Any any exciting Jeep stuff happening? Not really. Uh, I've still got things I need to get done. I, uh, I've had the, uh, the front drive shaft out of my Jeep for a while. Uh, I uh, wisely, or so, so, I, so I thought, uh, I was going to, you know, I'm here working on the Jeep anyway. Let me pull that front drive shaft out uh, so I can uh, replace the U-bolts. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm sorry, the, the U-joints and uh, whatnot. And if I have it out, I'm more likely to go out there and work on it because I don't actually have to remove it from the Jeep, which is not a difficult thing, but you have to right. put it under the Jeep and you got to unscrew these bolts and then get it out. And then you got to change out the, the U-joints. So I figured uh, having it out would get, get, get the work done quicker. Well, it hasn't. I've been driving around without a, a front drive shaft for a while. Interesting thing, what? though. Oh, yeah. How, how can you drive around without... Well, you, you don't need the front drive shaft if you're not in four wheel drive. Okay. So, uh, I would be nervous. Well, I'm only nervous from the standpoint that if I'm in a situation where I need four wheel drive, I, I don't have it. Uh, but uh, most sadly, most of my driving is I 10. Um, and then getting off of I 10 onto another major highway and then mm-hmm. driving a few blocks off that other my, major highway to my, uh, to my office. So, and then back the, uh, just the reverse, uh, you know, rinse and repeat going home. So uh, anyway, I've got all the parts. I just need to get out there and, uh, and do it. Uh, and that's kind of been the problem. I just, uh, getting out there and, uh, I'm, I, and I've said it before, I'm not one of those people that just like tinkering with the Jeep. Uh, I like, uh, I like driving it a lot. I like, mm-hmm. uh, doing, yep. having done the work and then being done with the work and then enjoying the Jeep. Uh, I've never been that type of person where, you know, let's, let's, let's see what, I, what can I do so I can get out in the garage and, 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 and work on the Jeep is uh, not, not something that I look forward to. Yeah. I like, I, I like it once I'm doing it. That's kind of me too. I got to get started and, with it. And then, and then you finish it and you're like, God, I did that all by myself, but it's just that motivation to get out there and start it. Mm-hmm. Oh, and uh, here's something that's uh, that's kind of interesting that I think may uh, give you an inquisitive look. Uh, YJ Nate in our uh, chat room, uh, he says, I drove around with no rear drive shaft for a while. Yeah, I just read that. How do you drive around with no rear drive shaft? You put it in four-wheel drive. So that all you- the power goes through to the front, uh, the front uh, axle. So you're actually driving a front-wheel drive vehicle at that point. Since there's no drive shaft linking the transfer case to the rear differential, uh, there is no power going to the the rear differential. It's all going to the front. You'd have to drive really, really slow. No, not right? at all. Really? Well, I guess. It, it really depends. Uh, yeah. If you, um, well, actually, no, because since the transfer case is not locking the front and rear axles together, it, if you have open diffs on the front um, the front axle, it would be just like driving a, a, a front, uh, front drive, front wheel drive car. Hmm. See, I would, I need to see, you know, the, um, the animations of the workings and how it would work to, to understand it. I'm a visual, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. To understand it in my head to see it. So it's uh, it's a good way of getting home. Sometimes if you break something, the only problem is is you need things like uh, um, something to stick in, like a, a, a yoke that you can uh, uh, stick into uh, the. Uh, um, let's see if I'm thinking about this right. I don't think. Oh no, you could take the drive shaft out. It'd be all right. I'm thinking of a transmission where you have to pull. If you pull the the drive shaft out, it can leak transmission fluid. But you'd be okay in the uh, the transfer case, I believe. I guess it would depend if you have a, oh yeah, you'd need a slip yoke eliminator. And as long as the yoke was still in the transfer case, you'd be fine without a rear drive shaft. In any Jeep or is that just the Cherokees? Oh, it should be any Jeep. You just just have to look and see how the setup is. Uh, You have a, um, I'm pretty sure you have a uh, a double carden drive shaft in your Rubicon. I would say they're a very, very high likelihood. So uh, you could actually remove the rear drive shaft and uh, put your uh, Jeep in four-wheel drive and 
drive all day and all night that way. Hmm. I hope I never have to try it. Well, it's it's good to know these things, especially right. when you go off road and if you need to get home and you're looking at uh, paying several hundred dollars and having your uh, vehicle okay. towed someplace. I or imagine my tow would be a lot of money. Yeah, if you were over at Rosh Creek. So yeah. Anyway, that would uh, that's that would be uh, that's always good to, to to learn things, and I I just take it for granted. And it's interesting when it comes up, uh, and that's one of the great things about having you here since you're new to all this stuff. Uh, it's, uh, we have Jeepers out there that are, are new to this and people are listening that are thinking about getting a Jeep and don't know these wonderful things that you can do with a Jeep since you have multiple ways of, of getting power from the engine to the wheels. <laughs> There's all these fun things you can do. Little uh, tricks. Yep. And get you out of harm's way or, uh, get you further into harm, depending on the type of individual you are. <laughs> so how would you know that... You have a problem, and you would need to do this. Oh, I think you'd know it. Uh, <laughs> you would know that the, the the rear tires aren't going, or the, maybe the drive shaft broke, uh, right. or, or the the U joint broke uh, because of you were you know going off road, and right. uh, you'd look at it and say, "Well, I can't drive it like this. So what can I do to to get, to be able to to get it home?" And uh, towing is the simple thing, is the best thing, is the safest thing. But uh, you always don't want to. Not everybody wants to spend a couple of hundred to five hundred dollars uh, for a three-hour tow. Right. I think that's what's cool when I go off-roading at Roush Creek, and I guess it would be most any park. You're with experienced people who mm-hmm. would know these things, and like when I broke my steering stabilizer, hey, just take it off, and you're gonna be fine. I would have never known that. And yeah. I think that's what's so cool well, that's great. about this community. That's the neat, thing, the neat thing about learning all about the Jeeps and, and doing all these things. All right, guys. So I want to remind you, if you're watching us on YouTube, we want you to know the Jeep Talk Show is also available in audio-only format. Great to listen to while commuting or while working on your Jeep. Subscribe via iTunes, TuneIn, Google Play, or iHeartRadio and never miss an episode. Hey, speaking of subscribing, you can now subscribe with your money. Yes, you can contribute directly to the show via PayPal. Just go to JeepTalkShow.com and look for the little orange button that says subscribe. Uh, You can cancel at any time. And even if you don't subscribe with your money, we appreciate you taking time to listen to our show. Hey, and did you know it can take up to four days for your favorite podcast episode to show up on Apple iTunes? It's true. iTunes is a great free service, and we appreciate Apple for all their hard work. But we want our listeners at the Jeep Talk Show get the Jeep Talk Show as quickly as possible. That's why we are recommending that all of you iTunes users subscribe to our podcast, No Multi-Day Delay. You'll get the newest episode much quicker. Open up iTunes, search for Jeep Talk Show, and hit that subscribe button. And never miss a great, funny, informative podcast again. And we want to remind all of you out there about our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Jeep Talk Show and be sure to get and be sure to subscribe. Do you know every 100 subscribers Tony gets a cookie? Cookie. I've got to get uh, the the PBS uh, cookie monster going cookie Yeah. for that. Got to get that drop. Hey, join the, the Jeep Talk Show team. We are looking for volunteers to manage our vast social media presence on the web. You can be the Jeep Talk Show's social media voice. Send an email to info at jeeptalkshow.com to find out more. Hey, that's it for this week, guys. Wherever you're wheeling, if you pack it in, pack it out. Let's leave our outdoor recreation spots in as good, if not better, condition than they were when we arrived. And remember to always tread lightly. Stay on designated trails and don't wheel where you're not supposed to. If you'd like to learn more about the tread lightly principles and how you can help keep our trails and public lands open for their off-road use, head over to www.treadlightly.org. Hey, folks, and don't forget, you can check out my blog at jeepmama.com. And uh, Josh uh, does uh, some voiceover work. I think it's what, uh, Voice VO? Voice of Josh. Voice of Josh. That's right, voiceofjosh.com. And uh, you know what? Josh is now on Facebook. So if you want to go over there and give him a hard time about not being on the show tonight, uh, I would not, uh, well, yeah, just go ahead. I'll I'll encourage you. Go, Go give him a hard time. Anyway, you guys have a great His Jeep week. coming up really soon. Oh, is it? I think it's March 1st. That's another great thing about Facebook, seeing all those birthday notifications. Yeah. I'm a man. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you guys have a great night. And uh, don't forget, Tuesday nights, 8 p.m., uh, the Jeep Talk call-in show with uh, Tammy and I. We'll see you guys later.